Welcome to SBC Essentials. My name's Chris, and in this series, we're going to detail Sangoma's line of session border controllers, or SBCs. Starting with this video, we're going to discuss how and where you need to use SBCs, and then we'll get into the various models available, as well as how to set up your SBC solution from start to finish. First and foremost though, what is an SBC? SBC stands for Session Border Controller and it has many uses in the voice over IP world. I like to think of SBCs as SIP firewalls, however they are so much more than that. Let's start with a breakdown of the various use cases for SBCs. The first use case for SBCs is security. An SBC will typically sit between a trusted zone such as your LAN and an untrusted zone such as the WAN or internet. It provides a buffer between the outside world and your internal PBX. It's never a good idea to open up SIP from the outside world directly into your PBX without some sort of protection. I mentioned earlier that SBCs act as sort of a SIP firewall in the network, and this is a good example of that. Now imagine that you had a web server running on port 80 internally on your LAN. You would never want to simply port forward all external requests on port 80 to that web server. You would want to protect it with a firewall that could provide an extra layer of protection that defends against denial of service attack, provides intrusion detection, among other things. So an SBC can protect your SIP PBX against similar types of DOS and DDoS attacks. It provides intrusion detection and guards against reconnaissance and toll fraud attacks. In this example here, we can see an SBC in use. On the customer side, the SBC is sitting between the PBX on the LAN and the VoIP traffic coming in from the WAN. There's another SBC at the provider, which is pretty standard practice for anyone who provides SIP trunking to customers. There are tons of security features included with the Sangoma SBCs. These include a traditional IP firewall with service, protocol, and port rules. It also includes access control lists, or ACLs, and has the ability to blacklist specific hosts or networks. In addition, there is also a SIP firewall, which performs similarly to the standard firewall, but adds some SIP-specific features, such as registration monitoring, source IP, user agent, and SIP profile filtering, as well as malformed packet protection. Additionally, the SBC provides intrusion detection and intrusion prevention services and DDoS attack protection that recognizes and prevents denial of service attacks. Finally, by simply having an additional layer between the PBX and the outside world, you can hide your internal topology from anyone inspecting your network packets. The SIP packet header information is that of the SBC instead of the PBX itself. Another use case for Sangoma SBCs is for hosted PBX systems. When your PBX is hosted in a data center, it is even more susceptible to security and NAT issues. Having an SBC in front of your hosted PBX allows for all of the same security features mentioned above, plus the ability to do far end NAT traversal by having a WAN IP address on the SBC itself. This also allows for inbound and outbound call control and control over the DNS registration methods so that you could potentially make changes to the PBX on the inside, such as replacing the PBX entirely while maintaining the registration of all your remote users and offices in the SBC. For remote phones, the SBC can handle TLS and SRTP encryption and offload that function from the PBX. The Sangoma SBCs also have many features related to SIP trunking. On the SIP trunk customer or client side, if you're utilizing connections to multiple SIP trunk providers, the SBC can provide failover routing, load balancing, and least cost routing. On the SIP provider side, the SBC can provide all of these functions to customers or to SIP peering vendors. There are also some really powerful features for SIP trunking vendors, such as an advanced XML call routing engine, dynamic load balancing, database routing, and stateful call control. If the built-in features aren't enough, there's also a REST API for additional control. Another useful feature for SIP trunking providers is the ability to do XML-based or call detail recording for billing purposes, as well as RADIUS server integration for both call detail records and authentication. Now let's talk about failover, high availability, and redundancy. 
The Sangoma SBCs have the ability to not only do hardware failover in the event of an SBC failure, but they can also do failover routing in the event of an internet, SIP trunk, or PBX outage. In technology, services and equipment are bound to fail at some point, but by utilizing the high availability and failover features of the SBC, you can help prevent outages and lost revenue. One more use case for the Sangoma SBCs is for instances where you need to do media transcoding. So you can offload the transcoding to the SBCs and take that load off of your PBX. This would allow you to, for instance, maintain high bandwidth and high quality codecs for local phones on your LAN and sites with sufficient internet bandwidth. However, the SBC can also transcode audio into more compressed codecs in situations where bandwidth is limited. As you can see, there are tons of use cases for Sangoma SBCs, and we really just started to scratch the surface here. In the next video, we'll cover the various models of SBCs in Sangoma's line of products. I hope you enjoyed this video, and we'll see you in the next one.